I was being interviewed for Trust Me, I'm a Doctor, and we were talking about DNA testing generally, specifically, obviously, fitness and nutrition, but it was a fairly broad discussion because obviously DNA testing incorporates disease and you know, other parameters as well. And one of the things that they'd said was they'd been talking to geneticists who were saying things like, you can't use someone's genes to predict whether they're gonna be obese or not. And my response to that was, I agree because we don't do that. You know, we actually have people who are obese, who have these gene variations, and what we're specifically doing is looking at what the relationship actually is. What is it that means that because they have these genes, they are obese? So we're kind of um, reverse engineering the situation to create that understanding. So we absolutely agree with what the geneticists are saying, and we don't do that. For many years, we've looked at obesity and we've considered nutrition and we've considered exercise and they've been sort of the prime drivers of the market but actually it's probably fair to say that understanding the psychology and the behavior is probably something that's going to have the biggest impact on our ability to have an effect on this kind of epidemic if you like of, of people getting heavier and heavier and so what we're doing at fitness genes is we're really working hard to understand those behaviors and how they relate to the genetics and how we can somehow understand triggers, understand motivation, understand lack of motivation. Um, and, and, and it's not just about people's ability, or not ability, but people's desire to go and exercise, but it's about what drives them to do certain things when it comes to their diet. Even though they know it's not the right thing to do, or it's not the right thing for them to do, they still do it. And we're really focused on understanding that. Nothing infuriates me more than the conversation that starts with that people who are overweight are lazy. Um, I think it's an incredibly naive thing to assume um, and I've had many discussions both in the media and also you know, with other fitness professionals and other health providers that this statement is, is not always true. Now, you know, there are some overweight people who are incredibly lazy but then there are other overweight people who are walking to work every day, who are on their feet all day in work, who are exercising and they're trying to follow diets that they think make sense, but it just, it just doesn't work. You know, there's no precision in the approach that they're taking to lose weight. So it's not that they're lazy, and it's not that they're doing something wrong, but they're just not doing the right thing for them. And yeah, it, it, it drives me crazy. And if you think about it, um, when you do something and you don't succeed in it and you've got people criticizing you for that inability to succeed in that task, you are going to feel terrible and it's going to stop you from trying it again and trying it again. And the problem is they're being blamed for something that genuinely is not their fault. And our priority is to actually start to help them understand the reasons why it's not their fault, to help knock down that wall that these naive and, you know, frankly, ignorant people have made these overweight people construct out of a feeling that they're doing something wrong. And we're trying to help them figure out how to do things right and ultimately prove all of these people wrong. Our, our current understanding of the landscape, if you like, is that most diets fail. And I think that the problem is that we actually create some confusion with what we mean by a diet. To some people, a diet is, I can eat meat or I can eat steak or I can eat beans but I can't eat a burger or I can't eat a piece of chocolate and that's what the diet is whereas to other people what they understand by the term diet is actually a pattern of eating you know over the course of the day I need to do x y and z and I think that what we're really realizing now is that we need to reframe how people think about their entire sort of nutrition approach that you know, we're doing away with this idea of counting calories and be much more focused on the constitution of foods. So what do the carbohydrates and proteins and fats look like relative to your requirements? Because depending on what you do, depending on your genetics, depending on other environmental factors, that will have an impact on how much protein you do need and how much carbohydrates you need and how much fats you need and then what types of fats that you need. But I think we're also starting to pay attention to micronutrients as well. And again, the, 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 the kind of the landscape or the broad picture here is that it's not entirely about focusing on fat loss. It's actually also about focusing on the other things that are important to health that contribute to that process. So how healthy is your gut? 
your, back, your, um, your gut's bacterial diversity um, and all of the positive effects that has. I mean, you know, in this day and age, people refer to the gut now as a second brain. And absolutely, it's absolutely critical if someone wants to lose weight, they need a healthy gut. Um, there's also looking at aspects such as, you know, recovery, muscle recovery, making sure you're taking enough rest, making sure you're sleeping. There's, there's so many things now that are important that the focus on fat loss, which essentially only drives a short-term goal, or uh, I rephrase that, it essentially drives your focus to a short-term goal. It has to be changed now to a much longer-term goal, which encompasses many aspects of your sort of your biology. Everybody needs a starting point. Um, and the starting point is always the foundation. And what is the foundation to a human? It's genetics, it's your DNA. Um, if you think about humans as data, there's essentially three main types of data that a human consists of. There's the genome, the biome, and the connectome. The genome is obviously your genetics and your DNA. The biome is all the bacteria that covers your skin and your guts, everywhere, everywhere bacteria um, exists. And the connectome is all the data that exists within your brain and nervous system and sort of all the connectivity parts. Now, we can't deal with the connectome. We can deal with the genome and that's what we do. We can deal with the biome and there's certainly companies out there that do incredible work with things like microbiome and gut bacteria and things like that. But ultimately where fitness genes sit is with the base of all of this information. We kind of bring up the foundation and expose sort of the, root, the roots to your biology to say, based on you know if everything is even these are things that you need to do in order to achieve your goals but by the way if we also know your biome if we know your blood results if we know your history and all of these things we can be even more precise with the recommendations that we give